Hey people, this is my weekly rundown of things in entertainment news that interest me. And I've got a lot to cover this week because I've got to cover things from this past week and the week before that. Because I was not able to make a video last Saturday. So I'm going to try to not spend too much time on any one of the things so I can cover this and not keep you here for like 20 minutes. So, let's get into it. I'm going to start off this video with some mini reviews because since the time that I made my last video I've seen four movies and even read a book. Yeah, an actual book because it's really odd for me because since I'm in college right now, aside from comic books, I really don't do much reading for pleasure because I'm usually reading for classes or procrastinating and not reading for classes and then skimming like 40 minutes before. But you, the point is that I've usually got a lot of other reading to do, so I don't really have time to like get into a novel or anything during the school year. So I was glad that I actually had the time during spring break and was able to read a book and enjoy it. But I'll get to that later. First, movies. The first movie that I watched over the break was Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and I saw it on DVD, and I obviously I didn't see it in theaters when it came out. And I liked it a lot. I, obviously on DVD the quality isn't going to be as good as it is on Blu-ray or in the actual theater, of course, but the effects did look pretty good to me from DVD, and I'm sure they did look better in theaters. Um, I was very impressed by the motion capture performances, Andy Serkis' season, and some of the other apes that I don't know who the actors were who played the apes, but they, they were all very convincing and it looked very cool. And I think Caesar was a very interesting character, even though he wasn't really able to communicate like in a standard way that an actor does. I think that it was a very interesting performance and I think it's kind of a shame that it's undervalued by a lot of people since most people won't really know that much about the process of the filmmaking and know who this person is and what goes into doing that sort of thing. My only major gripe with the film is the title because the aside from being a mouthful rise of the planet of the apes, it just to me implies that by the end of the movie the apes will have taken over the entire planet and st established their civilization, which is not what happens. And I'm glad, because in the trailer, you see these apes kind of overrunning the city, and it's like, okay, I get that maybe if they're organized and intelligent, they can overrun this city and cause some chaos. But bottom line, people have guns, and they have bombs, so these apes aren't going to just be able to start some rebellion and then just take over the entire planet. That doesn't make any sense. And that's not what happened. So. The film brought it to an ending point where it made sense, and I was glad about that. And it definitely feels like a part one, and they intend to tell more of this story. And since I think it did well pretty much critically and at the box office, there's a good chance that there will be a sequel, and I'd be interested in seeing where they take it. The next film I watched was On a Plane. They showed The Muppets, and I was like, hell yeah, I'll watch The Muppets. Screw it, I'm 21, but... The Muppets are the Muppets. They're, they've been around for a long time. Like when I was a, when I was a little kid, they had Muppet Babies. I think that was like my first major exposure to the Muppets. And then we had some of the VHS tapes. Uh, but I'll get back to that stuff. The film itself, it was decent. It, I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, but it was a little bit more childish than I was expecting in some ways. But it was kind of a stylistically childish. Way, I, it's hard to describe it. You have to see the film itself, but it doesn't take itself very seriously, which is fun. And it's definitely, definitely a family movie. It's not really meant as something that adults would go to see by themselves. It's something that they would go to see with their kids, and the kids would enjoy it because, well, young children. And they enjoy it because, you know, it's entertaining. And then there are these surprisingly amusing moments where they, they do something witty or just kind of silly that's, that it's kind of a wink to the older members of the audience. So those, those were fun. So overall, it's an entertaining movie and some good songs in it, too. Um, the one thing I'd say about it is that I... Of the Muppet movies I've seen, I don't know how many I have seen. I've, I think I've seen at least three before this. I like the ones where they're telling a different story. Like, 
other than just the Muppets doing their own thing in random situations. I, I think my favorites are Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island where they're adapting another story. So if they do make another Muppet movie soon, I think it would be cool to see them do something else in another setting. I never did see the Muppet Wizard of Oz. Not sure how good that one was, but just to change it up a bit and get, and get a more interesting plot then. <laughs> The plot of this film was the Muppet ha the Muppets have this studio and there's this oil tycoon who wants to buy the studio then tear it down and dig dig up the ground to get some oil. So they, the Muppets get back together to try to put on this performance and raise enough money to buy their old studio back. And it's, it's very simplistic, but it's more about the ride and just seeing all the crazy situations they get into. So, the Muppet is a the Muppets is a decent movie. I recommend it if you like are someone who's grown up with the Muppets and would just like to see it, see it for that. Or if you've got children and would like to take show it to them and watch it while you're doing other things, possibly and just let them watch it. But <laughs> moving on, another movie I watched on DVD was Real Steel, and seeing the trailers for Real Steel, I had very low expectations of it because it's just like okay we have robots and they fight each other. <laughs> That's our movie. They didn't really do a good job of showing what the story of the human characters was and that's really kind of the center of the movie because the robots aren't really characters that much. And it, I was surprised at the quality of that story. I think it was stronger at the beginning to be honest and it got a little bit cheesier towards the end, but overall a decent story. The one thing I was a little bit disappointed in was at some point in the film, mild spoilers here, but it's not really a major spoiler, they do imply that the main robot is able to understand humans and has more going on in, in his head, well, metaphorically speaking, I guess, than the standard robot. So I was expecting somewhat more of a story closer to the Iron Giant, if you've ever seen that movie, but they really didn't take it anywhere with this with this robot that they had, and they didn't really make the robot into much of a character. He was still just kind of there as this fighting machine. So uh, there's talk of making a sequel to the movie, and maybe if they do, I, I don't think that there's really that much potential to make a good sequel to be honest, but if they do, they could go deeper into who who this robot is as a character, maybe develop him, but uh, it, was, it was a decent movie, and I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed the fighting of the film, because I'm not a boxing fan, and I don't think that boxing really lends itself to choreographed fight sequences that are like the central action of the movie, but it was really entertaining in this, so I, I think that those scenes were pretty well done, and the effects were definitely pretty solid there, and overall it's an enjoyable movie. It's not like a great movie or anything, but it's, I don't think it's a bad movie. And the last movie I watched last night, I went with my brother to see 21 Drum Street, and I thought that was hilarious. Uh, there's not too much I want to say about it, like you can tell a lot from the trailer what the plot is about, but there were a few little things in there that were about how the plot progressed that weren't expected, and a few surprises along the way too, I don't want to spoil that. But the one thing I do want to say about the film is that I feel like it succeeded where Hot Fuzz and Observe and Report didn't exactly succeed at being this very entertaining action comedy. And I don't want to... Hot Fuzz wasn't that bad really, but it wasn't as good as it looked. And Observe and Report was bad. <laughs> like, I don't want to... I, I tried to put that lightly for a second, but I, I don't want to because there were like three or four funny moments in Observe and Report Toss, but this movie had me laughing pretty hard. So I definitely recommend seeing it if it seems like your type of movie because it was a movie that I saw from the trailer and it's like, okay, this looks like a funny movie, but it could be one of the, the 10 funny movies, 10 comedies that comes out this year where it looks like it's going to be funny and then you see it and it's really disappointing. Because there are a lot of those that come out. 
but it's really a movie that's pretty much as funny as it looks, so I was happy about that. And for the book I read, I read The Hunger Games, and it, I was interested because the movie's coming out, and there's just, I'm kind of, I don't know what, if it's like arrogance and liking to be kind of the person who knows stuff or what, but I like to re-know the source material a little bit before I go to see the movie. So I definitely enjoyed the book. I don't want to talk too much about it and give, give away the plot, but I think the one of the challenges with this film is going to be kind of the fact that a lot of the story is kind of very internal. It's narrated in first person, present tense. So there will be times when there's not really any dialogue for a few pages and it's all what's going on in the main character's head. So it'll be interesting to see if they keep it restricted to the main character or maybe go off and do some other stuff to show what's going on in other parts. So. I'm curious about that. And it's a very violent book, so I, a lot of people have been wondering if they can do it justice as PG-13 when there's like some serious violence and blood going on in this, so that would be interesting to see how they do that, but if you don't, I'd, I'd recommend reading the book, and I'm, I'm hopeful that the movie is going to be good, and I'm interested in reading the next two books in the series, and hoping to see where it goes from there, but if you've got time, I'd recommend picking up the book, but definitely if you don't feel like spending the time to read the book, check out the movie, because it's a pretty cool story.